uh, go through uh, the whole uh, treatment and uh, recognition chain for women uh, with the stroke uh, compared to men, but I will clearly focus on women because I have um, in the rebuttal, I'm the no part, so I will try to prove that women do not have the same excess than men. <laughs> and um, uh, uh, this is uh, more indirectly shown, but also directly shown um, by um, uh, by all right from the start, actually, but the recognition of stroke symptoms, uh, that women have more stroke mimics and more stroke, um, uh, more f less focal stroke symptoms, and you uh, might miss them in the emergency room, and it might delay the recognition for women. And uh, then, and this is this 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 has been uh, uh, shown in the referral that the the, the referral for the acute treatments uh, for IV thrombolysis and um, might also be endovascular therapy or mechanical thrombectomy uh, could be delayed in women mostly because they were living alone, and uh, and there is nobody else, no partner that recognizes the stroke symptoms and refer them. Uh, so there there is. And this might be controversial, but there are more studies showing that the, the treatment, the acute treatment is delayed in women. Um, uh, how that translates in a worse outcome, we don't know, but, but this is one point. Um, then uh, it could be shown, and this is just for the IV thrombolysis, that they receive later IV, IV thrombolysis and have worse outcome. Uh, they don't have more intracerebral bleeding than men, but they have a worse outcome even after correcting for age and comorbidities. But comorbidities in women play a larger role than in men uh, because they, they are older. In general, they are older and have more comorbidities uh, and, uh, and therefore also in, in part at least a worse outcome. So you have to do a little more for women to guarantee the same excess. Uh, this, is, this is my point, and you have to be aware that they are different, uh, and not many are aware of the difference. You should not treat them differently. They have the same excess, and they should be treated the same way as men, uh, but some points are, um, uh, are uh, different, and you should um, uh, take uh, an extra look and uh, you should have an extra look also why why the referrals are, to, are delayed. Could you do something else that they have a better uh, alarm or red alert system uh, uh, that you don't miss them? And uh, originally, I think in the IV from Belize's, they were in, at the beginning, uh, women over 80 were excluded. And now, and, and then it shifted more to um, uh, to, to the inclusion and for the endovascular therapy, it could be shown uh, that both have uh, benefits and they benefit because they included also more women over 80 and there were no, there were no upper age limit for these women. Um, uh, in the uh, rehabilitation or the post-acute phase, uh, uh, it could be shown that um, after three months, women have less uh, uh, independency. So uh, they are more dependent also with the activities in daily living. Uh, this could be also due to comorbidities, osteoporosis, uh, orthopedic uh, problems, but also uh, they have a major uh, uh, more more depression. They develop, they usually are more depressed than men after the stroke. Uh, and then you should think of some extra care for these women with the comorbidities and for the depression, because the, the result is that they have a worse outcome. Uh, and um, one article highlights the fact that uh, uh, women don't call for help. Uh, they they are not more they are not so proactive in um, asking for extra help because they are us usually the ones that care for the others 
Um, so um, there you have to go more in depth why, why it's like this, but actually it leads maybe for the woman uh, that you have to invest a little bit more to that they have the same result. And this is also an excess problem. Um, so uh, these, these would be the, the points of in, in the rehabilitation. And then I will have a look globally and globally. I mean, I'm not, I'm now talking about the Western countries. Uh, globally, it could be shown in the large IVT thrombolysis, like the SITS registry that, for example, in, um, in the uh, Arabic countries, um, uh, there was just 28, 20, 28% women receiving IV thrombolysis, and that can't be uh, because it should be 50-50. And um, why is it like this? Uh, 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 this is reg this is these are the registries and in the in the larger registries there's also this 60 percent men and 40 percent women uh, the mean age is around 70 so I conclude that a large number of women would usually have their stroke over the age of 80 and men are is more common in, in the younger years uh, or why these are not documented, not showing up, not visible. Where are these women? And um, uh, and that is an indirect proof for they're not receiving, receiving the same excess as men. I mean, in, in the total, in these age groups over 80, they don't know, they, they are not showing up and we don't know what happens to the one because it's not documented. It's not documented and, and some countries do not have the, the, the IV thrombolysis, but, but, but all in all, um, uh, this is not showing globally uh, uh, the, the excess. And then, then I have to say, because my, my counterpart is, is my, my colleague Valerio <laughs> Castle, that in general, the stroke rates are increasing in China, for example, for men. <laughs> So, so, so men actually, and this is thought to be true when they are 60 or 70, they have a higher number of strokes than women, but women have the higher numbers when they are older, over 80. The future should um, give us more possibilities in, uh, if we include uh, the same number of women and men in trials and we do more sex specific analysis uh, that we actually know more uh, and can uh, and can shape the, the treatments for me for men and women and I, I think this is this is the point for the future uh, that that we try to do more sex specific analysis.